We're here to talk about this, the humble French press or cafetiere. This is a really amazing and underrated way to make coffee, especially for a group, but there are a lot of questions out there around this simple contraption. Do I stir? How long do I leave it? Shall I let it bloom? What temperature water should I use? Today we'll be answering all of your questions and trialing three recipes to see how you can get the most out of your cup. My name's Lizzie, and if this is our first time meeting, I'm here to help you make better coffee at home. If you want more tips on making great coffee, consider hitting that subscribe button. There's a lot of debate on the best way to make coffee with a French press, so we're going to be testing three recipes to see which gives the most satisfying cup, and we'll also look at the pros and cons of each. We'll be looking at James Hoffman's The Ultimate French Press Technique, Asa Christensen's new revolutionary way of using a French press with filter paper, and the Volcanica classic French press recipe. There are a few things that are universal when it comes to French press coffee. Firstly, your water. You'll want to use good quality filtered water. It makes a huge difference. If the water doesn't taste good by itself, it's not gonna make good coffee. Now let's get into what you need. Some good quality coffee, a kettle, some filter paper for the third recipe, a cafetiere, a grinder, some scales, and your water. We're grinding our coffee fresh today, so we'll be using the Fellow Ode Brew Grinder. We always recommend grinding your coffee fresh as it gives you the best flavor and the best control. First things first, get your water boiling. You wanna do this first so it has time to cool before pouring. You want to be aiming for around 90 degrees Celsius or 190 Fahrenheit. The kettle we're using has a handy thermometer built in. First up, James Hoffman's recipe, which promises a silt and sludge free cup of coffee. It uses about a 1 to 14 to 1 to 17 ratio. We'll go with a 1 to 15 ratio, so 15 grams of coffee to 225 mils of water. Grind your beans to a medium coarseness. So I've preheated my French press with some hot water and then I've just discarded it. Now I'm going to add the coffee grounds to the French press. Boil water and pour it over your grounds. So you want to pour 225 millilitres over your grounds. You want to let that sit for four minutes. Stir the crust on top and then skim off any foam or scum. Wait at least five minutes to let the coffee settle. The coffee particles should fall down to the bottom. Now you want to add the plunger into your French press, but don't plunge all the way to sit just above the coffee. Gently pour the coffee into a cup, using the plunger as a strainer if needed. The thing I like about this recipe is the full flavour extraction. I found you can leave it longer than suggested and it's still as delicious. Also you end up with a minimal silt, the method of letting the coffee settle and skimming off the top reduces the amount of silt and sludge in the final cup. There aren't really many bad points about this recipe. Although it is a little time consuming, the extended brewing and settling time make this method less suitable for those in a hurry. The next recipe is the Volcanica classic French press recipe. We're gonna be using a one to 11 ratio today, which is quite a strong cup. We want the water to be between 90 and 93 degrees Celsius, which is around 195 Fahrenheit. We're using the Burundi Long Miles Farm coffee, which is a light roast. It's like apple, orange, cinnamon notes. Delicious. If you want to try some of this delicious coffee, we've currently got 20% off your first order. So just use the code on screen and the link in the description. So you want to weigh 20 grams of beans to 220 mils of water. So I'll just weigh the beans. So grind your coffee to a coarse grind. I'm gonna set this Ode grinder to nine. If you grind it too fine, you'll end up with a bitter, filmy cup that will leave a thick sludge at the bottom of your cup that's undrinkable. Again, I've preheated my cafetiere with hot water and chucked it. The priming process preheats your French press and will help maintain the temperature of the coffee and the press while brewing, allowing for a perfect cup every time. Now it's time to brew. Pour your coffee grounds into the French press. Once you have your coffee grounds in the cafetiere, you wanna start pouring your water. It works best if you have a kettle with a long neck so you have more control over the water while you're pouring. And you wanna start at the center and spiral the water around the coffee until you hit the wall of the French press so that all of your grounds are completely saturated. This stage is known as the bloom. The water will cause carbon dioxide to release from the grounds and it should froth and bubble up. 
you'll want to take a spoon and gently stir the coffee to ensure the water disperses all throughout. Once you've saturated all the coffee grounds, you want to add the rest of the water. Add your filter, but make sure not to press down yet. Set a timer for four minutes and do nothing. When the timer's done and four minutes are up, put the palm of your hand on the top of the plunger and press down. You'll feel some resistance, but as long as the coffee rounds are not too fine, the resistance should be minimal and the filter will hit the bottom, leaving you with a perfect full bodied cup that will showcase the very best flavor your coffee has to offer. The benefits of this recipe are that it's quick and easy, it's nice and strong. However, there is a little more silt going on than the other recipe, but it's definitely an easy one to follow for everyday use. This last recipe is pretty wacky. It's from Asa Christensen, who has a channel called The Coffee Chronicler. I'd never heard of using filter paper with a French press before, so let's see if it works. This recipe calls for a finer grind, like what you'd use for an AeroPress, and hotter water to speed up the process. With this recipe, you wrap the plunger in the filter paper, which I suppose means you filter more of the sludge out of the brew. Open up a paper filter and give it a rinse with some hot water inside the cafetiere. This means you're also preheating the cafetiere. Remove this water after a moment. We're using a one to 15 ratio, so 15 grams of coffee to 225 milliliters of water. For this one, you wanna use a finer grind setting. Not crazy fine, just a bit finer than what you'd usually use for French press. So you want to set it to about what you would for an AeroPress, which on this Ode grinder is a four. Add the grounds to the French press. Once you have your grounds in there, you wanna to top with water. 225 mils. We've already measured the 225 mils into this kettle. Stir the coffee and water eight times to ensure even mixing. Start a timer and allow the coffee to brew for one minute. Meanwhile, pop the paper filter over your plunger. After one minute, stir the coffee three or four times to break up the crust and help the ground settle. Allow the coffee to brew for one more minute. Insert the plunger and slowly press it down over 45 to 60 seconds. And we need to push this down extra slow so that we're not making any rips in the filter paper. So once you've finished, decanting is optional but recommended to stop the extraction process. You can already see this brew is so clean and transparent. Let's taste it. Look, no sludge whatsoever. That's what I love about this recipe is the flavor clarity. The paper filter eliminates the oils and the silt, making it cleaner, clearer. It's so rich in flavor. Also by using a finer grind, the method reduces the typical brewing time for a French press, making it relatively fast. The issue with this recipe is that you need filter paper. It's got a few more steps to it and you have to pay attention to detail and timings. My favorite is this recipe, Asa Christensen's recipe, because that really clean flavor is fantastic. We've covered a lot today, but the important takeaway here is that the French press is an incredibly versatile tool. Whether you're seeking full flavor extraction, minimal silt, speed, or even a combination of these elements, there's a method out there for you. And let's not forget the essentials that remain constant regardless of the recipe you choose. Always use good quality water and freshly ground coffee. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more coffee tips and tricks. Happy brewing everyone, see you next time.